In this video, we're going to look at solving for the income and substitution effect of a price change. We'll start here with a consumer's utility function, good x and good y, both raised to the 0.5 power. Consumer's income and prices are given here. We want to see what happens if the price of good x increases to $10. In other words, we want to find the total effect, substitution effect, and income effect of the price change. Let me first look at this graphically, and that might help uh, guide us in understanding the mathematics a little bit better. Let me move up here. Okay, here we go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to maximize utility subject to the initial price of good X equaling $5, price of good Y equaling $2. And we find that tangency occurs at point A. We're going to see mathematically the consumer will buy two units of X and five units of Y. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to maximize utility subject to the new higher price for good X when the price of good X equals $10. That'll steepen the budget constraint. And we'll find that the indifference curve would be tangent right at this point, at point B, where the consumer will buy only one unit of good X now and continue buying five units of good Y. So moving from A to B would be considered the total effect of the price change. This movement from A to C, this movement from A to C will be the substitution effect of the price change. Holding utility constant, and when utility is constant at its original consumption level of two units of X and five units of Y, utility will roughly equal 3.1623. Sliding this new budget constraint up until it just touches the original indifference curve here, there'd be a tangency here. I'm not showing it, but there'd be a tangency here. And at this tangency, which occurs at point C, the consumer would buy 1.4 units of X and 7 units of Y. This movement from 2 to 1.4 represents the substitution effect of the price increase on good X. The remaining movement from C to B represents the income effect of the price increase. So the substitution effect is going to be here minus 0.6 units, 1.4 minus 2. And the income effect of the price increase on good X is going to be minus 0.4 units, 1 minus 1.4. So hopefully what I've done here graphically will help, uh, help you better understand what I'm going to do now mathematically. So let me go back to the beginning. So we start with our uh, initial conditions here. Price of X is $5. Price of Y is $2. Standard utility maximization problem. I'm going to find the marginal utility of good X and marginal utility of good Y by taking a couple partial derivatives. So the marginal utility of good X, we bring down the 0.5 here uh, from the exponent on X, and then we're going to subtract 1 from it. So 0.5 minus 1 is why we have a minus 0.5 here. Y is treated as a constant, so it just hangs along for the ride. In a similar fashion, we get the marginal utility of good Y. Setting up the utility maximizing condition, where the consumer maximizes utility by setting the marginal utility per dollar spent on each good equal. I just plug in our results from the last slide. So marginal utility of good X up here divided by the price of X and doing a similar thing for the right-hand side. Uh, I notice the point fives cancel, so they're gone in this next step. I'm going to multiply through by 5. So 5 divided by 2 is where this 2.5 is coming from. And then I am going to, but you can cro think about cross-multiplying here, X to the point five times X to the point five is X y to the 0.5 times y to the 0.5 is y, so we get this result. Okay, so I solved this thing, I simplified this mess down for y, and now I'm going to plug this into the budget constraint. Okay, here's our budget constraint. So for y, I am plugging in 2.5x. I'm going to simplify that, and we find x equals 2 and y equals 5. We saw that result graphically. The next step is to do the same thing, but this time when the price of good X is now $10. So the marginal utilities don't change, okay, that, that's the same. Setting up the utility maximizing condition, dividing it by the respective prices. The only thing different here is that instead of having 5 down here, we've got 10 for the price of good X. Simplifying this, we get Y equals 5X. Once again, plugging this result into our budget constraint, where we have Y 
we're going to plug in 5x. And we see that x equals 1 and y equals 5. So again, we saw this result on the, the graph that I showed at the beginning. To get the total effect of the price change, uh, consumption of good X falls from 2 to 1, and the consumption of good Y is unchanged. In step 1, Y equals 5, and step 2, Y equals 5. All right, let's find the uh, substitution effect. So finding the substitution effect, we're going to evaluate the utility function at the original consumption bundle that we found in step 1. In step 1, we found X equals 2 and Y equals 5. Plugging those values into the utility function, we found that u equals 3.1623. And again, you saw that result at the beginning graphically. So setting u equal to 3.1623, uh, here's our utility function. So what are we going to do next? We're going to take that result that we found in step 2 where y equal 5x. We're going to take that result in step 2 where y equal 5x and we're going to plug it now into this above equation and going to simplify. So where I see y, I'm plugging in 5x. So 5 and x are both raised to the 0.5 power. Okay, so just rewriting that last step here. I'm going to bring out the, uh, this uh, 5 in front here. So 5 to the 0.5 leaves this x to the 0.5 times x to the 0.5 is just x. Dividing through by 5 to the 0.5, we see that x equals 1.4. And plugging that 1.4 into the y equals 5x equation, y equals 7. Again, we saw those results graphically. Here they are numerically and how you find them numerically. So the substitution effect, as I mentioned graphically, is going to be 1.4 minus 2 or minus 0.6 units. And the uh, substitution effect on good Y would be two units. So because of the price increase, the substitution effect leads us to cut back on good X by 0.6 units. And it causes this consumer to consume a little bit more of good Y. Two more units of good Y. Uh, here, again, we are comparing the new consumption bundle, this 1.4 and 7, with the consumption bundle found in step 1. To find the income effect, uh, we're going to take the consumption bundle when price of good x equals 10. So C step 2, x equals 1, y equals 5. And then we're going to look at the consumption bundle when finding the substitution effect. This 1.4 for x and 7 for y. And we're going to look at the differences. So 1 minus 1.4 is the income effect of the price increase. So this is a normal good. Uh, uh, something you'd buy less of as your income goes up. So isolating the income effect, we get minus 0.4 on good X. And the income effect here on good Y is minus 2. So good Y is also a normal good. We can summarize this all up in a table and maybe hopefully make it easier for you. I know there's a, a lot going on here, uh, but hopefully this table will maybe help simplify some things further. In step one, we found the opt optimal consumption bundle, uh, good X equals 2, good Y equals 5. In step two, at the new price, price of good X is 10, we found the optimal consumption bundle, good X is 1, and good Y is 5. The total effect is just taking column B minus in column A. To find the income effect, we noticed that the utility at these values here, 2 and 5, was 3.1623. Um, and we found that good X was 1.4 and good Y was 7. So here again, I'm explaining what's going on in this column. We're holding utility a real income constant and just trying to isolate the effect of a price change on the consumer's uh, spending decisions. Okay. And so what we find here is the, the consumer would cut back on good X and would consume more good Y. Again, holding real income or utility constant. The substitution effect is column C minus column A. Again, we saw this graphically, and the income effect here is minus 0.6. The substitution effect is 2 for good Y. And then finally, the income effect uh, is looking at the uh, movement from... Um, taking column B and subtracting from it uh, column C. So minus 0.4 for good X and minus 2 for good Y. 
Okay, I hope you found this video helpful.